Welcome to Colonel Football Weekly as we take an inside look at Nickel State University football. Today's program is presented by the Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional, the official sports medicine provider of Nichols Athletics. Colonel Football Weekly is also sponsored by Rouse's Supermarkets. You're either local or you're not. And People's Health, your Medicare health team. Hello and welcome to Colonel Football Weekly presented by the Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional. I'm Mike Wagon. I'm alongside the interim head coach of the Nichols football team, Steve Axman. Coach, short week this week. I know you're busy. We appreciate you taking the time to uh, stop by and join us here. Very short week. It was a uh, long ride back home and uh, you know, our kids had to uh, get ready for some practice yesterday, which uh, we did for the first time this season. Usually we take Sundays off, but... Uh, Got to get ready for uh, Southeast Louisiana. You close out the season Thursday night, the annual River Bell Classic against the Lions and uh, Southeastern playing for a conference championship here. They're going to give you all you can handle. Yeah, no doubt about it. They're in first place right now. They've got a very good football team. We got to see if we can spring an upset. All right. Well, we've got to go back before we go forward. Taking a look back last week, Northwestern State, the opponent in Natchitoches. The Colonels trying to end their lengthy losing slump. Their last win had come against the Demons last year, and you got off to a real promising start in that game, and unfortunately, just kind of fell apart after that. Yeah, we really started out nicely with a with an excellent drive. Uh, you know, went down, scored right away, and uh, was looking good. Um, we didn't hold up though. The uh, next thing I know, we were down 14-7, and and it was 21-7. But we had a good chance going in towards the end of the half. We got the ball down to the 20-yard line, but unfortunately we faltered. Um, missed the field goal. Field goal attempt hits the crossbar and bounces off. And then I'm not sure. How, I think it was like 50-something seconds later, we're down 28-7. Uh, so uh, that didn't bode well for us uh, going in at halftime. And, trying to get ready for the second half, but uh, kids played hard. They played hard the whole game. That, that's one thing I will say. Definitely a swing late in that first half. Let's go back and take a look at it. Take you out to Turpin Stadium in Natchitoches Saturday night. Coach Ackman trying to get the troops fired up. Over the last four years, Nichols had defeated Northwestern State twice with a one-point loss mixed in there. In fact, the most recent win for the Red and Gray, as we mentioned, came against the Demons in last year's conference opener. The Demons looking to keep their hopes of an FTS playoff at large berth alive under second year head coach Jay Thomas, who used to lead the Colonels, just adding more fuel to the rivalry. This one played in cold temperatures. Nichols won the toss, elected to receive, and Boe Bear and company put in together a clinical drive. This was the first of three straight first downs as A Bear swings it to Xavier Marcus for a 15 yard gain to midfield. This drive was all about execution. A Bear to Demond Bolt, the sliding 18 yard reception down to the NSU 32. Two. Bolt led the Colonels with five catches on the night. A good mix of running and passing on an eight-play, 79-yard drive. Second and eight from the 19, Michael Henry wheels his way into the end zone. His team-leading sixth rushing touchdown of the year. Henry started the night with an outside shot at becoming a 1,000-yard rusher. Northwestern State would answer first down from their 45. Zach Atkins with a strike over the middle to Cody Jones. Good for 21 yards. Atkins' assault on the NSU record books would continue. Jones, meanwhile, totaled four catches for a team high 68 yards. On third and goal from the three, Atkins finding Bryant Mitchell, third touchdown reception for him this year. Northwestern State would get the ball back after a three and out. They run the occasional play out of the Wildcat. This is Cody Jones dashing for 16 yards into Colonel territory. The Demons racked up 300 yards on the ground. One of these uh, Good rushers on the night. Garrett Atzenweiler punching it in from the one, his eighth rushing TD of the year. That makes it 14 to 7 Demons late in the first. Final play of the quarter, Daniel Taylor picking up 24 yards. NSU rotating fresh backs into the game all night. Taylor went for 80 yards on 11 touches. This drive would continue into the second quarter. The ninth play of the possession, first down from the 17, play action and Atkins finding a wide open Zach White. It took a little over three minutes for the Demons to go 90 yards. Rough game for the Nichols secondary. First score of the year for White and the Demons up 21 to 7. After Chris Collins picks off Bear, Northwestern State with a chance to maybe put this away early, but Cole Frazier with a sack of Atkins leading to a three and out. This was the first sack of the year for Frazier and just the second for the team. It got Andrew Carter fired up. Colonels looking to cash in. Bear with a throw on the run to Darrell Watson. Good for 16 yards to the NSU 30. One of two catches for Watson on the evening. The drive stalls in the red zone, though, so it's Francisco Condado on to attempt a 34-yard field goal. 
It's the way the season is gone. It clangs off the upright, no good. An 11 play drive goes to waste and the Demons get the ball back with a minute 42 to go before halftime and they need only a minute 19 of it. From the 24 yard line, it's Atkins to Jones for the score and Northwestern State goes into the locker room up 28 to seven. Coach, amazing how quickly that thing turned. Unfortunately, it, uh, it was amazing and uh... You know, it just kind of, we, we, we thought we felt we were in the game and we had a chance to get right back in it. And next thing you know is the swing of either 14 or 10 points. And uh, that's something that um, was hard for us to overcome. We spoke about it uh, a moment ago. The, the Colonel secondary has been one of the strengths of the team, not just this year, but over the last couple of years. Just seemed like a lot of miscommunication back there on Saturday and uh, the Demons finding uh, wide open targets down the field. Well, there are some young people in that mix as they are there. Uh, there are a lot of young people in the mix on, on you know, on the defense. And uh, so that's, you know, one of the biggest problems that they've had is, is, you know, being able to play as a group. And it's just like, you know, same thing's true for the offense. If you have one or two players that are out of sync and not doing the right thing, that's all that may be needed to uh, allow a back to crack a 20-yard run or for someone to be wide open in the end zone. And both of those happened Saturday night. What would you tell your team at the break? Just tell them, hey, we, we can get back in this. You know, we've uh, we just got to come back out and, and put a stop on them and get the ball back and keep moving the football. And, you know, we felt we could move the football. We, we felt offensively uh, uh, that we were in a bit of a groove and we're, we're doing some positive things. But in the same token, uh, we missed some things. You know, in the course of the game, we missed a couple of reads where we had wide open receivers uh, downfield that could have easily been... Um, uh, big chunks of yardage once our quarterback just unfortunately uh, missed his read by the time he throws the ball out of bounds when uh, you know we had a chance to really come up with a big gain so uh, and then uh, then we had some drops that were just devastating stop drives you know I mean when I say devastating it wasn't like they had to make great catches they were in the hands of the receivers you know so uh, th those were very disappointing things because I thought that we we had something going and that we could have given this uh, team or uh, run for their money uh, through the whole game hadn't we made those type of mistakes. Now, unfortunately, the Demons would pick up the pace early in the third quarter. One of the most dangerous receivers in the league, Ed Egan, was actually held to two catches on Saturday. One of them was a 13-yard reception on third down. That moved the ball to the Nichols 28. Atkins went 10 of 11 in the first half and didn't slow down much after that. Third and goal from the 10. Atkins with a rollout, and he finds Cody Jones for the second time. That makes it 35 to 7. The Colonels bounce back, though, and show some signs of life. Michael Henry with a 20-yard rush here into Demon territory. What a night for Henry, 29 carries, a career-high 146 yards. He also had four catches. Third and five coming up from the 14. Bo A there looking, looking, looking. Finally dumps it off to Tobias Lofton. This moves the chains, an 11-yard pickup, and the Colonels are in business. Three plays later, the ball on the two. A bear coming up here with a quick drop, and he bullets it to DeMond Bolt for the touchdown. TD number six for Bear. Bolt scores for the third time this year. It's a 35 to 14 affair late in the third quarter. But NSU counters with a quick drive of just over two minutes. Atkins slips out of trouble. He finds tough McLean snaking away from the defense for his only catch of the night. Atkins sets a new school record with his fifth touchdown pass of the evening, 42 to 14 Demons. After a series of stops, NSU strikes again in the fourth. Once again, it's Atkins, this time with his feet. He runs it in from the three. Atkins snaps Bobby Hebert's old Demon record with six combined touchdowns. Bobby Hebert, coincidentally, the father of Colonel quarterback Bo Hebert. Fellow senior Kalen Henderson replaces Bear late. Kyron King goes up and hauls in the pass. Good for 23 yards plus a personal foul. Fourth and six from the 28. Henderson has to make something happen. He scrambles 10 yards for the first down. This was a 12-play, 60-yard drive that took over six minutes. It finishes up with a scoring strike from Henderson to tight end Nick Skelfo, his first TD of the season for Henderson, his third. That accounts for the final margin of 48 to 21. Michael Henry now within striking distance of 1,000 yards rushing, just 113 away with the win. The Demons securing at least a 500 record in consecutive years for the first time in a decade. Your overall thoughts on this one, Coach? Well, again, it's, uh, it, was, it was a tough football game for us. Uh... I thought we were going to be able to do a lot better than we did, but uh, we struggled defensively. You know, they, they put up a lot of points real quick, which uh, made it a little tougher offense to try to put it in another gear. 
Um, I thought that we did some really fine things on offense, and yet we made some very, very big mistakes that were just too costly to overcome. You got Southeastern this Thursday. Again, a condensed week, but you just had a bye week a week ago, so maybe a little extra time you squeezed in there to look ahead a little bit to Southeastern? Well, no doubt about it. We spent some time uh, each day on Southeastern and, as well as uh, Northwestern uh, last week in the off week, so we pretty much had a, a, a plan, a general plan set, which we've been just uh, tinkering with the last couple of days to uh, make sure we're ready to go come Thursday night. We'll talk more about matchup with the Lions when we come back here on Colonel Football Weekly, presented by the Sports Medicine Center at Thibodeau Regional. In sports, you strive for first or best. The Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional is both. The region's first comprehensive sports medicine program with a team of the best sports medicine trained experts. You're serious about the game. We're serious about your safety. With advanced concussion testing technology and certified athletic trainers, we're keeping athletes safely in the game. Play hard. Play to win. The Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional will help you play it safe. Donnie, I'm in Rouse's at least three times a week, and I want the best prices every day. Come on, Chef. Let's go shopping. All right. There's got to be at least a thousand items just on this one aisle. At Rouse's, we stock more groceries than anyone else. I can see that. So what's with the tag? Best price every day. It's the Rouse's guarantee. You're getting our lowest price every day. So when I see this tag, you know you don't have to wait for a sale. I can shop any day. And get our best price every day. Rouse's. You're either local or you're not. Well, we're all about the people that we care for. At People's Health, we know that when it comes to health, what works is teamwork. Each People's Health plan member has a team of talented professionals working together to coordinate care so our members can do what they love to do. That's what we do. We're here for you with People's Health. People's Health, your Medicare health team. Back here with you on Colonel Football Weekly, presented by the Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional. Mike Wagonot with Nichols Interim Head Coach Steve Axman. Coach, you got the Southeastern Louisiana Lions coming to Thibodeau Thursday night for the River Bell Classic. Southeastern gunning for at least a share, if not an outright Southland Conference championship, and you guys are going to have your hands full. No doubt about it. I, you know, we're probably playing a team that's uh, right now the uh, playing as the best team in our conference. You know, they're in first place. Uh, they're looking to win it outright, so... Uh, you know, they have a lot, lot riding on this game. Uh, they have an excellent offense. Boy, they can score some points. I've, I've not been able to watch them an awful lot with our short week. I've had to pay attention much more to the defense. But uh, still, what I saw is kind of frightening. They, can, they know what to do. They know how they've got some very talented people. Their quarterback uh, is a great spark plug. I mean, he makes things happen uh, both with his running and his throwing. Defensively, they're, they're very sound. They, they play very well. They, they know their defense. They understand their defense. They play like a mature group. So overall, it's, it's going to be uh, a big test for us, but uh, we're working to get it done. All right, we got you covered Thursday night as Nichols hosts Southeastern Louisiana with the River Bell on the line. We start our coverage on the Colonel Sports Radio Network presented by your local Super Chevy dealers with a pregame pass on KNSU 91.5 FM. That begins at 3.30. Then at 4.30, it's Colonel Weekly on Fox Sports Radio, KJIN AM 1490 in Homa. They'll also carry the game live. At 5.30, it's the Colonel Countdown throughout our network of stations, including our flagship ESPN Radio New Orleans 100.3 FM. Kickoff is slated for 6 o'clock. The contest airs live on WHNO TV 20. And then a half hour after the game, tune in again to KNSU for extended post-game coverage on the Colonel Roundup. Well, before the Colonels and Lions take the field, Nichols will honor its 2014 senior class. Our own Jansen Verdon spoke with several departing players about their varied emotions as they prepare to put on the uniform one last time. It happens to every athlete at some point or another in their career. And while expected and often planned for, it still manages to catch them off guard. The last season of life as a college athlete is a mixture of closure and uncertainty. The bonds between a player and their teammates are often stronger than those between blood relatives. For many, it's the last time they will ever suit up to compete in a sport that they have likely been playing since they could run but it also means that some will be saying goodbye to their family. 
the brothers they spent so much time with over the course of their career as they move on with their lives after graduation. Uh, it's like a bittersweet moment, you know. Uh, of course, the year hasn't gone how we all expected it to, you know. Uh, but still in all, I'm still happy. I'm happy to be a colonel. I'm happy to, that I came to Nichols. I'm happy decisions that I made. I'm happy with the people that I met along my four years here, you know. I appreciate them, you know, uh, the memories that we have, the friends, the just the lessons I've learned since I've been here, I appreciate those, and I feel as though that was really, that was more the bigger picture. You know, now that you put it that way, I haven't really thought about that. It's something that I've done my whole, you know, high school career, college career, and it is coming to an end. But, but you know, it's been really fun. Um, I've just made so many uh, friends on the team, and I really feel close to these guys. Bonds that I can, you know, take uh, with me my whole life. You know, friendships like that. And I mean, that's the most important thing uh, for me, you know, ever since I've been here is just making these uh, lasting uh, relationships. I'd say fondest memory was just uh, developing brotherhoods with uh, the offensive line because I'm an offensive lineman. Uh, every year we, ha we always had a different group, but we always had, you know, camaraderie and, you know, it was always fun. You know, I must say with every, every uh, single offensive line group we've had. As the seniors look back on their careers as colonels, they reflect on the many lessons learned that they feel will help them throughout life. Definitely the team concept you get uh, playing football. You have to work together with everyone on the field at the same time, and you have a whole team, you know, a team of 100, 100 people. So you all have to work together. You know, you all have to get along. So definitely teamwork in any job you have, you know, you're going to need to be able to use teamwork as, as an advantage. So that's definitely what I've, what I've gotten from this university. While this senior class didn't win nearly as many games as they would have liked, they have higher hopes for the current underclassmen, convinced that better days are ahead for the red and gray. We, we still, we had a lot of seniors, but we still had a lot of young people playing. You know, you look at Mike, Mike Henry, um, he's doing good, he's a junior. Um, you look at Tuscany didn't even play this year. So, and um, that's just on the offensive side of the ball. I think, um, you know, uh, I'm just going to keep it on the running back level. Uh, Mike Henry and Tobias Lofton uh, will have big years next year. And, you know, Toscani coming back is going to have a huge year um, rushing the football and passing the football for us, leading them at quarterback. And, you know, also I can't forget about Dash Duncan, a great passer as well. You know, he can come in and pass it. So um, I'm, gonna, I'm a little homer with the quarterbacks, you know, I know because I know they're going to step up and be great leaders next year. And they're not going to, um, you know, accept uh, this losing mindset that has kind of been accepted, I guess, this year. Uh, even though, you know, that's not what we wanted, but I think it's, it, it should be able to change, you know. The future appears to be brighter for the Colonels, but what's next for the seniors who close out their careers this week? Defensive back Davin Bovey is among the national leaders in solo tackles and has had an all-conference caliber career. He has been a major contributor to the team, but he wasn't always sure if he was going to play college football. I didn't know I was coming. I didn't know I was playing anywhere after high school. Um, my last game of high school, it was just I felt the same way. Uh, I cried. You know, I didn't know because uh, I didn't get any. I, did, I had schools looking at me, but I didn't really know what I was going to do. I didn't have no offers or nothing. Um, so I didn't know if I was going to play anywhere. You know, so I thought that was my last game. You know, it turns out it wasn't, but I was just, I don't know, I was blessed to have this opportunity. But this, this, I'm going from, that was from high school to college, you know, um, but now it's from college to what's next. And I don't, you know, it's, who knows what's next, you know, so this could really be the end for me. Quarterback Bo Abair is unsure what life after football holds in store, but the future is wide open. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't graduate till May, so I'm taking this Christmas you know, after football season's over, to really put my mind to what I want to do, actually. So it's a good question. I don't exactly know. Maybe coaching somewhere. Um, maybe I'll own a pizza shop or something. I don't know. Or maybe I'll catch gators down the bayou with my grandparents. I'm not sure yet, but uh, I'm going to try to figure that out this Christmas. By that point, a new head coach will be in place, and the returning group of players will be hard at work on their off-season conditioning, looking to turn the program around. When they eventually do, there'll be no prouder group than this year's senior class, which took their lumps but never quit in the spirit of the fighting colonels. For Colonel Football Weekly, I'm Jansen Verdan.
Thank you very much, Jansen. We appreciate it. Coach Axman, I know uh, you're fond of this senior class. Uh, no doubt about it. I, actually, I'm fond of this uh, football team uh, amidst all the uh, turmoil and uh, problems that, that we've had uh, and, you know, not winning a game uh, yet this season. Uh, they've been a great bunch. They, they've worked very hard. They've, they've uh, rallied uh, each time I've asked them to rally. And uh, so I really wish them the best, and I hope, hope we can get a win this weekend for them. We'll talk more later coming up after a quick timeout here on Colonel Football Weekly, presented by the Sports Medicine Center at Thibodeau Regional. Back with you on Colonel Football Weekly, presented by the Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional. Mike Wagonai with Nichols Interim Head Coach Steve Axman. Uh, Coach, uh, we take a look around the uh, league and what's going on, and we talked about before we went on the show today, what a crazy uh, league this is and how difficult it is week to week. You take a look at a team like McNeese. They almost knocked off Nebraska. They went into last week ranked 13th in the nation. We turn around this week, they're not even in the title hunt anymore. It's just a, uh, a gauntlet uh, each and every week here in the Southland. Extremely competitive uh, conference and uh you know the the difference from the top to uh you know perhaps the the middle is 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 really extensive there's just a lot of good football teams in this league take a look at what happened this past saturday southeastern louisiana quarterback brian bennett threw for four touchdowns as the 10th ranked lions down number 13 mcneese state in hammond abilene christian ended stephen f austin's playoff hopes as wildcat freshman deandre brown ran for 256 yards in nacogdoches sam houston state set a school record with 601 yards rushing including 212 from donovan williams and a thrashing at houston baptist and senior mark roberts became the first player in lamar history to record a thousand receiving yards as LU beat back Incarnate Word in Beaumont, Lamar securing its first winning season since 1979. So we take a look at the standings heading into the final weekend of the regular season. It's Southeastern and Sam Houston tied for the top spot. The Lions one win away from taking their second straight Southland championship. They'll play at Nichols. The Bearcats host Central Arkansas on Saturday. The Cats won Southland titles in 2011 and again in 2012. Folks, to find out more about Nichols football and Nichols athletics in general, uh, check out our social media websites, Instagram.com slash Colonel Sports, YouTube.com slash Nichols Athletics, Facebook.com slash Go Colonels, and Twitter.com slash Go Colonels. We'll take our final time out here on Colonel Football Weekly, presented by the Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional, and wrap it up in just a moment. In sports, you strive for first or best. The Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional is both. The region's first comprehensive sports medicine program with a team of the best sports medicine trained experts. You're serious about the game, we're serious about your safety. With advanced concussion testing technology and certified athletic trainers, we're keeping athletes safely in the game. Play hard, play to win. The Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional will help you play it safe. Donnie, I'm in Rouse's at least three times a week, and I want the best prices every day. Come on, chef. Let's go shopping. All right. 
There's got to be at least a thousand items just on this one aisle. At Rouse's, we stock more groceries than anyone else. I can see that. So what's with the tag? Best price every day. It's the Rouse's guarantee. You're getting our lowest price every day. So when I see this tag, you know you don't have to wait for a sale. I can shop any day. And get our best price every day. Rouse's. You're either local or you're not. Well, we're all about people that we care for. At People's Health, we know that when it comes to health, what works is teamwork. Each People's Health Plan member has a team of talented professionals working together to coordinate care so our members can do what they love to do. That's what we do. We're here for you with People's Health. People's Health, your Medicare health team. I want to welcome you back to Colonel Football Weekly, presented by the Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional. Time to announce our Rouse's Student Athlete of the Week. Rouse is the official grocer of Nichols Athletics. You're either local or you're not. This week, it's libero Kaylin Igia, who recorded 22 digs on Saturday in her final home match, leading the Nichols volleyball team to a straight set win over McNeese State and punching the Colonel's ticket to this weekend's Southland Conference Tournament. Best of luck to the volleyball team. Mike Wagon, I'm here with Nichols interim head coach Steve Axman. Coach, uh, he came to us in week four from outside the program. We didn't know you. You didn't, you didn't know us. Uh, you've really become part of our family here. We hope you uh, feel the same way on your end, and uh, we just want to wish you best of luck going forward after Thursday's game. Well, thank you very much, and I certainly felt it was made to feel part of the family, and uh, it's been a great experience. What's next for you? I'm just going to go home and enjoy my uh, family and the Christmas season. That's what I'm looking forward to. All right, Coach. We hope our paths are across again down the road. I'm we sure really they do will. appreciate everything. Thank you. The interim head coach of the Colonel. Axman. Folks, basketball season underway. The Colonel men visiting UCLA Thursday night at 10. You can catch it live on the Colonel Sports Radio Network presented by your local Super Chevy dealers. Quickie 95.3 FM will carry it live as will the Pac-12 Networks. It's on to Wake Forest on Monday for a 6 o'clock tip. Quickie has you covered on the radio. ESPN 3 will telecast it as well. Don't forget to uh, check out our website, GoKernels.com. That's G-E-A-U-X, GoKernels.com. You can find out all the information you need to follow Nichols Athletics year-round. That's going to do it for our program here. Again, thanks for joining us. We're going to wrap up this season. Coach Axman won't be with us, but we'll wrap it up for you coming up next week here on Colonel Football Weekly, presented by the Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional. And we'll see you out here Thursday night, the River Bell Classic, Nichols, and Southeastern Louisiana. Come help and honor our senior class before the game gets underway. We'll see you then. Colonel Football Weekly has been presented by the Sports Medicine Center of Thibodeau Regional, the official sports medicine provider of Nichols Athletics. This show has also been sponsored by Rouse's Supermarkets. You're either local or you're not. And People's Health, your Medicare health team. This has been a presentation of the Colonel Sports Network.